Hey everybody, it's uh, Chris over Dixieland Farm. Fall is in the air. It's the second day of fall. I don't know when you're watching this. Uh, fall 2018, because again, I don't know when you're watching this. It could be years from now. But I'm going to go over my ham shack, my ham radio setup and the antennas that I have. So uh, the first thing I have uh, over here is a tower. Tower goes up about 30 feet or so, and there's some antennas, and we'll get a close-up of that in a second. And then outside here, I'm walking around to show you the vertical antenna that I have up. Uh, it's right here. You see it? It's barely there. Yeah. So um, there's some ground radials. You can see right there. I'm going to add some more, and it goes up, and you can kind of see right there into the tree. So that is my. 40 meter vertical antenna. That is for 40 meters, and I also uh, tune it for 30 because I should also say um, this window right here is where my ham shack is. So it's right on the other side. And so I've got the wires going through the wall, and because it's such a short distance, I can use that vertical antenna on uh, bands by using my tuner. Usually um, with coax, there's some losses if you try to use a uh, antenna on something that it's not built for. Uh, it works okay, but there are feed line losses. But because the feed line is so short, because it's right there on the other side, I don't really have much to worry about. It's probably all going over a lot of people who are watching this as head, uh, and it's probably not interesting either, but suffice it to say. Did I say that right? I think I did. I can use that antenna on two bands, and then I've got my tower, which has two other antennas. One of them is a multi-band antenna, and one of them is for local two meter contacts, which I rarely use. So let's go and take a look what's on top of the tower. So on top of the tower here is a hex beam um, that's got five different bands that I can use that on from 20 to 10 meters, and it's rotatable, and it's rotated with the TV uh, rotator, which is pretty convenient. Underneath that is our TV antenna, that thing that looks like a uh, grill. Uh, and that captures all our TV, and the computer records all of that. And right next to it, you can si kind of see it. It, it looks like an H. You can see the PVC pipe right through the actual tower. That is my 2 meter antenna. So that is a 2 meter vertical 2 element beam that I built out of uh, ground wire and PVC pipe. So it aims directly to Winston-Salem, which is somewhere over there. If it wasn't so cloudy, you'd actually be able to see Pilot Mountain, but from here, right now, nothing. So over here is where the feed lines come into the house. So right out there, oh, if we can look, can't even see where the vertical antenna is, but it's out there. But anyway, this is where the feed lines come into the house. And I do not have that doublet anymore, but there was no incentive to remove it. Maybe I'll change my mind. And right over here is my switching power supply that provides power to the radio. This is an ICOM 718. I bought it new in 2009 and it is now considered an old radio. It still works. Uh, I rarely buy new things, but uh, I did buy that when my old Kenwood radio started going. Uh, next to it is an ICOM 32AT. Handheld transceiver works on 220 and 440. I don't use 440. Uh, nobody really does anymore. Nobody really uses two meters anymore, but I've got it. I can listen to police scanner with it if I'd like to. I can talk locally to uh, Hams and Winston Salem, but I don't. But I do have the option. Right here is an antenna tuner. This is the differential T uh, antenna tuner, so it acts. Uh, You've only got two controls. You've got the uh, capacitance and inductance. Normally you would have uh, a T would be a capacitance, inductance, capacitance, but this kind of works on a weird butterfly thing. It's a little more uh, fidgety, but you only have two controls. Uh, and I like it. And it is way too big for the shack that I have. I could use a much smaller uh, antenna tuner, but uh, back when I was using the doublet antenna, having a nice beefy tuner was a good thing and there's no incentive to go smaller. This thing works great, so I'm keeping it. And then right here is my rotator control. So the neat thing about this is it's cheap, and parts are readily available, and I've got a remote control. So if I need to um, dial in 
something to change the antenna uh, direction, you know, I can just use the remote and just bam, it starts going. Adventure paddles here from Morse code, and this thing over here is something that I built. So it's the SCAF kit. So it's a, um, a, uh, a filter so I can listen to Morse code and I can change the bandwidth and crank it down so I can really only hear the one signal I'm interested in and not everybody. And then it also is a, uh, oh, I can't remember the name, but there is a, a, a keyer in here also that uh, I built and I put them all in one box. When it's off, it's not on, and I can listen to the radio's output. When it's on, I'm listening to the uh, SCAF. Uh, let's take a look what's on the computer programs. Okay, so what you're looking at is everything that I can sort of do with my computer and the ham radio setup. So, uh, right here I've got my logging program, which is called CQR Log, and you can see that the frequency here is lined up with this window back here, which is my SDR, my Software Defined Radio. So I can click anywhere, and you can see the frequency here has changed. So, uh, one controls the other. If I change the radio frequency, it changes on the SDR, the software defined radio, so the computer is looking at everything that's going on on the entire uh, radio band that I'm listening to. Uh, so I can use the, the computer to control the radio or the radio to control the computer. Either way, and if we listen in, you know, we don't hear much. So that gives me the ability to see all the different things that are going on right here. So I can see there's a the conversation there, 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 there. And something's going on over here. Something's going on over here. Uh, I can see that there are um, FT8 digital transmissions going on right now. We can listen to that. I can see there's radio teletype going on. And by having the computer being able to see everything, it adds so much to the radio experience. And uh, I just set that up. I have a whole video about it, so I don't want to uh, bore you. But it's, it's, it's the computer and ham radio really do go uh, well together. Um, so, for example, this map is up right now. This tells me where it's daylight and uh, uh, darkness. And that changes what I'm going to be using what frequencies, what, uh, you know, transmission type, where I should aim, those kind of things. Um, all that helps me make contacts with uh, other hams. So I do Morse code occasionally. I'm not good at it, and I've definitely fallen out of practice. I do want to get back into that. Um, we are at a sunspot minimum, which means that there are less uh, people on the radio and I can hear less uh, when the sunspots go up, that will definitely change and I'll become much more active. However, having all these tools makes it uh, easier to make contacts with people. And I certainly do like radio teletype, so I think I might actually uh, take a listen in right now. Uh, let's see. So in this I've uh, uh, snagged, because I, I threw out a couple of uh, uh, calling and I nabbed somebody in the Yukon Territory right now. So there's somebody new on Radio Teletype and I'm just letting them know that, hey, you're doing great. And um, do I have a signal report? I gave him a signal report. And so we're just working through it so I can teach him. So he's come back to me and he's telling me that he's got a hex beam. I have a hex beam and he's doing 300 watts. I'm only doing 100 watts. And his name is Scott. And so I'm answering them back. Great, Scott. I happen to love Riddy because you are actually talking to a person and not a computer. And it's over. And now somebody else is calling me, so I'm going to call them. 
the one thing about radio teletype is that you cannot uh, go back and correct your errors. So errors go out. So you see and he, uh, this guy is typing out. So I'm going to go ahead and talk to this guy a little bit longer. And I'm going to say goodbye to you right now. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, and actually get to seeing me do a digital uh, radio teletype mode uh, demonstration here. And one of the reasons and one of the things I do with my, my ham radio setup. So uh, I do talk to people with voice. I've talked all around the world. I've talked to... Uh, hundred plus countries on different modes including radio teletype like this uh, but also voice and Morse code and uh, it's a lot of fun it's, it is an old man's kind of hobby uh, you know it, before the internet it was a big you know neat thing and now it's not particularly impressive uh, except for that I'm using the power of a, a light bulb and some wire in the air and I'm talking all around the world so that's kind of neat but anyway from Dixon Farm take care everybody